deserving of quality time Stop thinking everybody's on your side And that's the heart of a golden light Because they always seem to take advantage of your kind Your kind Your kind I know you have friends But I know that you don't All right. Welcome back, good people, to the newest episode of the Less of a Man podcast, the podcast that tells men everywhere, no matter what you're going through, that you are never less of a man. Uh, we're going to have a special guest today. A guest. Yeah, <laughs> Johnson. But before we get into that, um, let's start with our mental health check-in. EJ, how was your week this week? Um, So... I mean, the week's been good mentally. Um, I've just been doing a lot of reflection, just kind of being low key. Um, and it's always good to get a raise. We had our um, reviews today, right. so got a raise you there. So you could have money is always money. great. So, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. Also, I'm going to be moving on my own since my current roommate is going to be moving to somewhere kind of far away. So I'll be looking for an apartment for myself. So I think that's kind of good to be able to get in my own space and kind of be back to a place where I want to be. So I feel comfortable. I feel good. I'm ready to go. Um, so yeah, that was my week. So no, I, we noticed that there was no OnlyFans picture this week. <laughs> I'm like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> um, I mean, there were OnlyFans pictures. I just made a um, uh, OnlyFans page. Uh, I made a close friends group. So only close okay, friends. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, thank I appreciate you. that. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate that. So, Char, <laughs> how was your week? Um, it was cool. I mean, pretty much basic. I uh, went to work, came home. Um, oh, I found out I'm taking a COVID shot. I don't know if I said this last week or not, but I'm taking a COVID shot Tuesday. Two weeks. Huh? Two weeks before you're taking a COVID Okay, I, maybe I'm too excited. Maybe I'm excited. That's why I keep saying it. So, uh, yeah, I'm taking that Tuesday. Um, and my, I'm in manufacturing, so it's in the month, so it's always crazy at work trying to get stuff out the door. So that it, that part was crazy as far as trying to like answering questions and making sure stuff is good and all of that. But other than that, it was a pretty chill week. Um, nothing really spectacular about my week per se. I was supposed to go. I was actually supposed to be broadcasting from the sunny shores of Hilton Head, South Carolina, this weekend. But because my wife is actually busy with some stuff for her job, we decided to move it to a later date. So we'll be going in March instead of actually the weekend we're supposed to be going. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. Forgot about that. yeah, we kind of changed our plans like at the last minute saying, ah, we'll do it next, next, next month. So for, for my mental health week is uh, because I work virtual, I get down a bunch of rabbit holes on YouTube. And I was just watching, uh, it was a GQ, like 10 things you can't, live without and it was all the celebrities basketball players it was anthony mackie it was kevin hart uh ti and what i learned while watching these videos i watched like 15 you know how you just go down <laughs> the rabbit hole watching them that i don't really take care of myself i don't really have self-care stuff to take care of myself and maybe because of the pandemic that i just kind of like fuck it like i just don't have I mean <laughs> But what were they listing as the things that um, they can't live without? I mean, because... They had sage. They had... Tea. I'm just saying things for, like, mental health. They had. Yeah. They had, uh, like, face moisturizers. Yeah. This stuff to, like, take care of themselves. And I just looked at it, and I was like, I don't have none of this. Do you have a skin routine, sir? Where you kind of wake up in the morning and... I wake up in the morning... <laughs> but i was like that's why i was talking I, I was watching so many of these videos and i was like dude i gotta do better at self-care so i'm actually uh going out today looking at stuff i, heard, I could see some recommendations yeah give me some recommendations i knew you had some Go everybody ahead. got some too you i know ever do the skincare too what is what does she need to get you Tell me. Well, no, actually, I did the research and got it myself. So it's this um, I got a subscription. This is this um, it's called Lumen. So it got like a exfoliation. It got like a charcoal cleanser, and um, also they have like a moisturizer. They also got other stuff like a face mask you can use and like eye cream. Like it got a lot of good stuff that you can use that specifically use tells. Face mask? Huh? Yeah. Every I do a face mask. See? Send me a picture of you on the face mask before I. I, I will see. Okay. So all right, I want to see that. 
but that's what I've learned. I got to do more about self care. And also, one of the things is uh, all of them had like one of them had a chess board, and that was one of the things I want to learn because when my son gets older, I want to be able to teach him chess. But another thing, a lot of them had was books. A mm. lot of them had books. And that's something that was on my list. I always make a list at the beginning of the year of things I want to accomplish and reading more. I used to be a very avid reader and now I'm getting back into reading. So a lot of them had books on there. So that's why um, that's one thing that I want to do more for it. But that leans into our guests uh, today. All right. Yes. Mr. Trey D. Johnson, how you doing today? Yep. Yeah. How you doing this morning? Less of a man. What's happening? What's up? What's up? How's your uh, mental health this week? How's your week going? I mean, my week is good. I mean, for me personally, I'm feeling good. But there were some people in my circle who kind of lost some people due to COVID. So, and somebody, my um, wife's aunt, lost her mom yesterday. So, kind of. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Just you know, she she was blessed. I think like she was like 94, 90, 95 years old, I believe. So she she lived a good full life, but she passed away yesterday morning. So little, you know. You know, emotional for for her, whatever. You know, contact her. So she she says she's doing well, whatever. And got out this morning. You know, getting ready. Like I said, got up early, looking over some stuff on Facebook. And one of our sorors, she stationed up in South Korea. You know, holding family scars, the book. And it's like yeah, I saw that. So you post that. Yeah, I'm like, man, I'm I'm international. Like, wow. <laughs> you good money, man. Yeah, That's good cool. morning. Yeah, like, okay, got me feel like I want to do the split like James Brown. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good sign. Uh, I want to hold up for people his book. Yeah, you got yours? Hold up uh, Trey's book, Family Stars. He's the author of it. Um, let's just get into, get into this, Trey. Uh, for people who don't know you, Please let them know your story for our listeners who don't know you. Okay. Well, if you can't tell by my voice, I'm a country boy from Georgia, straight okay. from Georgia, small city outside of Augusta called Harlem, Georgia. When I was younger, I always wanted to be an author and a writer. So I guess one of my first things I started doing was used to write love notes to girls because I used to be shy. Believe it or not, I used to be shy. I'd be like, hey, girl. <laughs> like, hey girl, you pretty. Well, I feel like there's music playing in the background as you like write these. <laughs> like, the music like serenading in the background as you're like, bro. I used to listen to Luther Vandross and that Babyface song. I pay your rent. I took okay. it. As as I get home for work, I thought that was smooth. I thought what the, that was what the women wanted, but that always worked out. So. <laughs> so in time you know just still writing stuff and, and i want to do a lot but kind of nervous and kind of worried about what other people thought mm -hmm. so and a few years ago like in 2008 i actually won an essay contest mm -hmm. at a radio station and the prize was a trip to denver colorado to actually witness then S senator barack obama accept the nomination for the president of the united states so even though I was in the nosebleed section, I was actually was there taking pictures. I mean, I walked past like Jennifer Hudson, like literally walked past these people, and I'm like, okay, okay, cool. And so, just I, I had a passion to write. And I'm like, bump it. I had a lot of ideas in my head, and Family Scars came to fruition, and here we are. I released it November 27th. I'm a self-publishing author, campaign you're publishing, named after the community that I grew up in, and here we are and ready I to think, tell I think the world. One of the f fascinating things when I read the book was at the very end. I always want to read the about the section about the author and that's it, that you self-published uh, your book was very interesting to me. Also, but I want to get into when you said putting yourself out there, you was afraid to put yourself out here. That is one of the main issues with me. Mm -hmm. I sometimes, and that's why I'm, I'm happy that I do have like Shar and EJ here because they're more of putting themselves out there and I'm not, I'm more of a creative or two, one in the yeah. back grab her, yeah. Yeah, how did you, how did you overcome that? I'll be honest with you. For me, yeah, yeah, y'all been around me no time. Know that I'm not shy. I'm not scared. But I'm also too critical because again, I, I'm I worry, I worried about what other people thought about me compared to what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I I got tired of looking at people doing things that I wanted to do, and it's like 
there'll be a point at times I'm tired of being on the bench and I want to play. So I just put that fear to the to the side on the shelf and I just and I just did it. And just like you said earlier about reading different books, just you know, kind of reading what other people have done. And I like to even watch like YouTube stuff like with like Master P or other artists did to kind of like get themselves out there. And I know that if I want to be successful, have my dreams to come, I just need to go out here and do it. And I know as being the author that, you know, when you write stuff, you know, people are always going to have their opinions. People going to love it, hate it, whatever. But it's at the point that if you did something and you feel good about it, you got to go ahead and do it. You can't allow, you can't allow fear. You can't allow, you know, negativity. And even when I wrote the book, something I think I, I read and I heard somebody say this, that if you have a dream and goal, move in silence. Because once you put it out there, yeah. before you make it happen, somebody can always just say something bad or negative to you. But mm -hmm. after you complete the goal and put it out there, <laughs> nobody can't say, well, you can't be no author. You can't be this, that, whatever. And I'm like, well, I'm on Amazon. People actually buy my book and <laughs> I got reviews. I'm yeah, actually please. in South Korea. I, I got all of this. So, like, you, you, you can't do nothing. So it's good to always move in silence. Everybody don't need to know your business. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important considering the age that we live in where everyone feels to be that all of their information as far as the good side of their lives have to be shared in a social media on a public stance. And like I think I'm glad you touched on the fact that it's important that you hold the, the, your dreams and your aspirations close to your chest and protect it like it's your baby. And I think that's important that, you know, people kind of understand that, that not everything is meant for public consumption. So, uh, yeah, so I agree with that. So, um, but definitely, I guess to get into the book, um, I definitely enjoyed the book. I like a lot of stuff about the book. And I think one of the things that I liked about your book particularly was the characters in a sense that there wasn't necessarily a good or bad person. They were very complex characters in a sense that you didn't necessarily have a particular person that you were rooting for because everyone had something that either you liked or hated about that person. So what was your you know, thought process in terms of developing your characters and the thought in terms of trying to come up with what type of character that you wanted people to gravitate, gravitate toward? I'm glad you said it. I'm, I'm really glad you said it because that's one of the goals as um, far as my characters. Because, you know, sometimes you read something you read, or you look at a movie, there's a character that you hate or a character you really love. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make mm -hmm. some characters that you would actually can understand this situation. You may mm -hmm. not agree what they're doing, but you can understand. And some of the people that you can relate to, like, mm -hmm. like for example, Ellis Hickman, he was a businessman. You might not like some of the things he did towards his family, but understanding that, you know, he, he wanted to make money. He wanted to take care of his family. He had his image, stuff that he worked hard for. He didn't want to kind of, you know, stop what he doing, you know, but... And then even the son, you might not agree with a lot of these he he done, but you know there's certain parts that you can relate. Be like, okay, I can understand, or I may have done what he has done in a certain situation. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So I think it's great. The characters I think are all relatable. Um, anyone that reads the book is going to be able to just look in their own family and see those characters actually like in live action, right? So, um. We know that, like for me, this book did detail without even knowing a lot of uh, different situations that happen. And specifically, I like to say in Black families, I feel like it it literally encompasses like things that happen or situations or people or scars, right? Or um, things that have happened. So how, like, where did you get the basis of family scars, right? So it's about a family. There's a lot of different levels to that. And there's some fractures in there. Um, where did you get that concept from? Okay. Well, just like how you stated, in a family, that there's a lot of things that go on that we don't know. It's always, you know, people always say you don't judge nobody. And the reason why, because you don't know what somebody's experience is. So when you think about scars... You think about marks, bruises, physical, even emotional. So coming with the idea of the story, I want those people to understand that the things in your past can affect you right now. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I kind of called it family scars, because when you have a scar, even if you have a cut or a scratch, 
even been 20, 30 years from now, you still see the wounds. And so mm-hmm. I wanted people to kind of understand that, you know, something in 1980 can affect you in 2021 as far as emotionally. And so and when it comes to the, the family dynamics, then, you know, dealing with, you know, your family, you know, you can get away from your friends, but you actually your family, you, what you connected and how they you deal with emotionally. That can that can affect people in so many different realms. So I wanted to kind of kind of create a story that's is understandable, but then you kind of realize the damage you have done. And unfortunately, a lot of times that takes something bad to happen, so you can open your eyes up to kind of realize the things that you have done. Yeah, one of the things that I kind of saw I was I was picking up on is uh, bits and pieces about mental health, and it, and I felt like a lot of things that kind of happen in the book, some of them things wouldn't have happened if, if Ellis wasn't so against mental health. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. so I wanted you to talk about, cause I think in the black community, especially we have this feeling towards mental health. I was told as a younger, uh, black people can't afford to have mental health because mm-hmm. basically we have shit to do. We got to mm-hmm. pay bills. We got to go to work. We have shit to do. Mm-hmm. Like, can you talk about the importance of it? Oh, definitely, definitely. See, this is the thing what people don't understand as far as with mental health. I tell people this. If you got a headache, you go pop pop in an Advil or Tylenol. Mm-hmm. If your um, stomach hurts, you know, you go to the doctor. You know, if your foot hurts, you go to this doctor. But when it comes to mental health, you feel like you can't go to nobody or you look, you can't afford it. But then you can go spend two or $300 on shoes. So yeah. <laughs> you can do something what you really want to do. But again, that comes to the part of fear or, or, wor- or worrying what other people may say. And so, and I say, say this, that people need to get, get checked as far as their mental health and stuff. And just to kind of talk to somebody or a professional or even like in the, in the book, though he may not have realized what he was doing when he was talking to the, his, to his friends yeah. and those people. Yep. Yep. He really yep. doing therapy because he actually yeah. discussed things, was going on with his you know, life. And though his pe- his peers wasn't the professionals, they gave him some keep it real advice. They supported him. And so he has one to turn to. And like I said, with your with the therapy and mental health, definitely gotta get it checked because there's so many things that people go through that you just don't realize. I mean, I work in education, so I talk to students with so many, so many issues. I mean, I've talked to students who had their child raped, who was homeless. I mean, there's so many things I I can speak about. I mean, I actually even had a student that I didn't know she was going through issues until a couple of days afterwards that the news media came to the school and they wanted to ask questions. And I'm like, what's going on? And the student was killed by by the uh, police because she snapped and started killing her daughter. So it's just a whole lot of stuff that I've either seen, experienced, and so forth. Yeah, and Sean, and also, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, and I, I'm just even to um kind of expand on that. I know in a lot of the black families, it's particularly with the older generations. When I think about my grandmother and my grandfather, in terms of the secrets that comes out with families in terms of stuff that they choose not to talk about or we can't talk about. Hope, we're starting to see changes in that as we move from generation to generation. Outside of that, what are the type of things you think we can do to kind of, I guess, make it a normalcy for the Black community to start embracing mental health a lot more than what we are now? Well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you said it for this reason. If you talk to a lot of older generations, a lot of these that that went on in their lives, they needed help. Mm-hmm. But of course, it's like a like, like no snitch code. You can't say nothing. And mm-hmm. if you don't believe me, why in the, in the whole neighborhood that you can have multiple kids by one man, but nobody don't say nothing? Because, yeah. again, you know, just, just certain things like that. Because folks would always talk about this generation. But y'all did some things before. Exactly. Before. <laughs> you know, you did some things. It just, it wasn't, it, look, it wasn't recorded. It wasn't the need to right. put, put it out there. But, I think one of the things that could help us out as far as mental health is if we have more people um, to just come out and to say, hey, nothing wrong with mental health. It could be like local pastors. It could be um, celebrities or even just your parents or whatever. Just, you know, somebody close to you to support you. 
And even if you feel like you need help, then take the time to go with the person to, you know, to therapy or counselor. Be that support system. And I think that's the thing that people are missing a lot of times, that you don't feel like you have that person to support you when you go through trials and tribulations. And so that's that can be extremely important. And so if I'm going through issues and I don't know what to do, help me out, you know. That and I think that's that's something that's kind of missing as far as a lot of our communities, that 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 main support system. Mm-hmm. And I um and we talk about support system, we talk about this book, um, the family's like whole I guess uh, frame, right, is surrounded by or it was contingent upon the mom in the book, right? So she was like the backbone of the entire family. Mm-hmm. And so we, we typically see this in black families too. Um, we look at the black family, it's usually the mom, right? The mom is the backbone of the entire family. So when that variable is taken away, you kind of get to see and unpeel all the layers of things that happen. Um, and you, again, you never, you know, hear about some things that happened behind the scenes where the mom was working on the behalf of the kids or the mom was trying to be that um, mediator between, you know, the, the father in this book and then also the children. So um, I think it's really interesting that you're able to highlight that and pull that out in the book. Um, but I, 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 more importantly, I, I think it's important that if you're reading this book or that when you read this book, you see how um, the father, even though they were there, There was a lot of different things that they didn't realize they caused down the line with the children. So what would you say to Black people about their family dynamic in regard to having one person as a backbone? Like, how would you like to see that that change for the Black family? And it's so funny that in street terms, the the mom was the plug. So so she she, she, she put everything together. But really, it's hard to really say, and I say say like this, a lot of times... when things are good and things are normal, you don't feel like there's no issue. It, it usually takes something bad to happen to you really open your eyes to really realize what you have done or what you have said. So I always tell people, especially couples, communication is the key, but not just communication, understanding what the person is saying. Because I can hear you talking all day long, but if I don't truly understand, I'm still lost. So just communication, the goals, and then just listening. And a lot of times, if we actually can listen to what someone and understand what they're going through, then a lot, then you may be like, okay, we may be able to work out some things or just ha- come to some type of an, an agreement. And so a lot of times that we 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 go through some things and we don't really take it either seriously or we just think like, uh, it's a fad, whatever. And we don't pay attention to it. And we want to go back into our own comfort zone and just normalcy, you know. I want to expound on what uh, EJ was asking, because one of the things that I touched on is being a father myself, Ellis, man. And, and when I'm saying, like, when you have your, your, your kid for the first time and your baby, you're thinking all these goals and stuff and you're thinking about the future with them. I don't think you ever think about I'm not going to have a great relationship with them in the future and I'm just thinking like all this stuff that that has happened that has made them estranged especially with his son um Curtis I'm like you know how men are with their sons exactly yeah, it's exactly. like I don't think you ever wake up saying I'm not gonna be close with my son so I want to know how important do you think actual family relationships are with each other I, I promise you, uh, Daryl. I've I've talked to students, and I've seen this in personal personal life. That it comes to family scars. There's not an official book of how to be a father, a good father, bad father. You go with what you see or what you think is right. And a lot of times, that it's hard to be a good father because either you never had a father in your life, or your father wasn't good at all. I mean, I've heard stories that that their father abused them that mentally affected them their whole lives. And like you said, you know, we don't hold our child. We don't think like, Hey, I'm not going to have a good relationship. But in time, you like in Ellis, he was more focused on the money aspect of it and getting, getting his household together compared to having a relationship. And he, you know, most people think if I feed you, if I pay your bills, <laughs> I'm at the house, you know, that, 
you know, I got a relationship. But there's no like sitting down having a conversation. You know, I want to. You know, you you got a baseball game. Okay, I'm gonna come see you play baseball game. No type of no real relationship. It's kind of like we like roommates. We live under the same roof, but we don't have no type of relationship. And yeah. so a lot of times that we think we're doing the right things, but we're not really establishing that relationship. Like I've seen fathers. And sons that super close is like best friends. It's like, how are you gonna be best friend with your father telling him all these type of good stuff? And you know, and then there's some people it's like, you know, you ain't talk to your dad and whatever, and y'all lived in the same household. There's no type of relationship, none at all. So that's one of the things that when you have your child, like I said, I'm just hope to God one day I, I have I'll be a father soon, hopefully, prayerfully, that I want to be able to be with my child's life. You know, be there for them, go to PTA meetings and, you know, just 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 do stuff, establish relationships as far as my child, child, because a lot of people don't realize when you have a child, that's an investment, not just money. But when you get old, 80, 90 years old, you know, then going to a nursing home or going all these places, your child will be the one going to be taking care of you. In many cases, your child can be taking care of you better than your spouse. Yeah, that's really important. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. So, but look, it's funny because we because it's funny because we, we had an episode about that in terms of like um making the kids definitely the ones who have the keys at the end of the at the end of your life. So making sure that you know you don't make them mad or whip them a little bit more than you need to <laughs> you need to whip them. So, but um, I, I but to kind of um also talk about family. I know we focus on the relationship between the parents and the children. But what your book also focuses on is also the relationship between husband and wife. In mm-hmm. a sense, and, and me, I know I've been uh, married married for about 13 years now, but built together with my wife uh, over a total of 16. So I know the difficulty in trying to keep it fresh or making sure that life itself doesn't get in the way of um, making of um, kind of me, you getting away from each other from each other. And you and that's kind of like something that you touch on in the book also. So I know you being a newlywed, like I guess about a year or two now. What is the thing that you're doing? I'm almost four years. Almost. It's been four years. That oh wow. Four, four, it's four years in August. Oh, I was yeah. like newlyweds. I was like, what? <laughs> You've been married. You've been married for two years. It's four years now. It'd be four years August the fifth. Man, time flies. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, man. But even okay. Well, even my question even better. Like, what are, what are some of the things that you do to make sure that you and your wife keep that connection and life itself doesn't get away from you where y'all kind of start to pull apart from each other. Well, for example, with Valentine's Day and we know we're in the house and, and you know, with COVID, COVID. So I know she was like, well, Trey, you don't have to buy me nothing, this, 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 this. And we guys know when a woman say, I don't have to buy them nothing, they, they want something, at least a card or something. You can't, you, we, we all know the game. Mm-hmm. And so I just be creative. And so I just gave her a basket of items that she likes. Like she loves ketchup. She loved the little uh, little chocolate little bars and little sparkling champagnes and her uh, hand sanitizer. So I just did stuff that she enjoyed and she likes and which she was like, whoa. And so, and even it's crazy because statistics saying that there's been more divorces mm-hmm. <laughs> and child abuses in the COVID now than ever before because people are stuck in house together. And, you know, me and my work, wife, you know, we work under the same house. I know I go to the office at least two or three times a week. So I'm, I'm thankful to say that I actually like and love my wife. So we don't bother each other. We give each other their own, our own space. I work downstairs. She works upstairs. And we have lunch together at times that she don't have a meeting. Or we have, you know, dinner together. And matter of fact, we do like these he- Hello Fresh meals. Okay. You know, we can go and fix together. We we all fix that together and stuff, and just kind of interact, talk, chit chat, and stuff, and just kind of you know have our time together. Because again, it's it's important to like you say spend time together, but then also too sometimes you might want to get them their own space, not necessarily mm-hmm. just for their jobs, but things they might want to do. Like she like watch ratchet TV. That gives mm-hmm. me a headache. <laughs> 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 give, give 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 me WWE. I'll be watching um, WandaVision, 
You know, right. I'm, 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 wait, I'm waiting on the new Batman, you know, greatest superhero of all times, and I'm just waiting on new stuff. I, I can't deal with that. So just so you, space, so you, time. Do you have that Netflix issue where you watch the episode, they all watch something together, and she may watch it before you do? <laughs> How do y'all have that? Most, most of the time she <laughs> watch something that I don't is when something I don't really care about if I'm watching something, and I'm like... Okay, and then she might just go finish it because she you know I'm not into it. Or there might be some times like we were watching like um, Malcolm and Marie, and we both came to the conclusion that we both don't want to finish watching this because we we was <laughs> done with this all this arguing. And so <laughs> I was told to watch that by myself. Yeah, you you, you need to, and, then, <laughs> and and if you can last an hour, you're you're a strong man. Oh wow, <laughs> I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's on my list of movies to watch, but I gotta watch that by myself. And and don't drink when you do it. You're gonna drink drink water. <laughs> um, another thing that I liked about the book is that I think oftentimes, um, especially for black men, the image that we're portrayed are usually, you know, the ones that are um not faithful, right? We're usually the ones that are, you know, participating in infidelity. I think it's interesting that in this book. It was actually the wife um, and the husband from what we read and what I, we understand of the of Ellis's character. He was very much a one woman like person, like even in his wife's death um, in Gladys's death, he still was like, yo, I'm not really interested. I'm not really looking for something right now. Um, and then when he was talking to some of his friends and his friends, they shared their stories about infidelity themselves. It was almost like he was disgusted. So I, I really, really like that we're able to, give black men a positive image of on that front <laughs> on the other fronts, of course he did, you know, fall short. Um, so it's interesting too, as well, when we think about infidelity and we think about black men, like if black men cheat for the most part, women are expected to be like, okay, you know, pick it up and, you know, it, you know, figure it out, this happen and move on. Right. Mm -hmm. But to me, if a black man is cheated on, it becomes like, an even, even bigger issue. Like the level of trust is just completely demolished. There's the reaction and how um, it's portrayed or how you know the woman is treated afterward is, is significantly different. I guess the way that society I feel um, views infidelity on both sides is different. Like a man can do something and okay, boys are boys. But if a woman does it, it makes, it's like a huge thing, right? No standards. So, um, let's talk about how you feel about this standard or this double standard that we have in the black community where w one thing, you know, it's kind of like, it's okay on one side. It's not that it's good, it but be it's better, okay. than better. Right. Yeah. But, I, and it's so, it is, it's funny, uh, um, it, that double standards is our way for a man. I'll give you a perfect example. If you go in the streets and if you see a homeless man with a dog, most people feel sorry for the dog than the homeless man. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but but, but they'll, they'll, they'll people try to take his dog and lead a man. They're actually trying to help the man. And you you let a woman be out there. Oh, my God. They're going to find every single program they can to help her out. So mm -hmm. far as a man, yes, yeah, we always going to have that double-edged sword, you know, negativity. So... I would tell, like, like far as the men, that if you're married and you're in a committed relationship, if you want to cheat, why why you cheat? Just be single. Just have fun. Be single. Why cheat? Mess around. Your marriage because not only you lying to God because you're not fulfilling your vows, but you hurting mm -hmm. your wife, you hurting you know the family, and you put too much time, money, effort in something just to crumble. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, and, and, and like I said, there's, there's a lot of, you know, black men. I know you know, a lot of people don't want to hear this, but a lot of black men don't cheat. <laughs> and black men don't cheat. Yes. We, we, <laughs> we, we may fail, fall short for a lot of things in our lives, but a lot of men don't cheat. A lot of men are just happy for the person that they are because, you know, with every successful man, there is a good woman or support system that has his back. So... Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and, and women have to be better than men. Uh, that's that's. I'm just gonna leave. Hey, <laughs> look, look, you gotta be strong now. You know, look at Coretta, look, look at Coretta Scott King. She was a strong woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Uh, another thing I saw was is is about relationship. These in the in your book, these characters held on to these things like for a long time, mm. and they and it's like their relationship couldn't be repaired because they held on to these things. And I'm just like, my question to you is, how do people start letting go of their past trauma, and is it ever too late to try to fix the relationship? That, that it's a hard question, a question, and because everybody's bruises are different. And there's people who was abused when they was a child that still they hurt other people or like they said, hurt people, hurt people. And yep. so it's really mm-hmm. hard. And so for you to the to solve a problem, you got to first realize that you have a problem and then ask yourself, can you truly fully forgive? And when you forgive, not just, hey, I'm going to forgive you, but I'm going to forgive you. I'm not going to bring this back up to you. Um, I'm not going to forget it, of course. You know, you can just, you know, you can take somebody's eye out. I mean, I'm still going to be one eye, but I can forgive you and not bring nothing back to you as far as the neg- negativity. And then just kind of see for yourselves, how can you move past your hurt? How can you work through things that even that even that you went through it, you don't understand why? You know, you don't understand why this person raped you. You don't understand why this man shot shot at you or this woman robbed you. You know, a lot, you you might not have no you know closed ending for your situations, but you just have to try to focus on yourself and in your mental health to try to you know surpass some of this stuff. And then sometimes we go through things to be a teacher or educator for some for someone else who may be going through some things as well. We don't see that, which is kind of messed up. It's like, well, done. I had to go through issues to help you out. But sometimes, <laughs> you know, but sometimes you could be that learn that that tool, that learning board for somebody. Yeah, you got to be willing to tell your story. I think that's important because a lot of us, we keep it all crumpled in, but we, but we don't realize that when we tell our story, it actually inspires people to be able to make changes in themselves um, as well. So I think that's important to always do. And, um, and, and you know, so funny is that a lot of us, all of us got stories that we can tell and that we can share that, you know, some may be bald inside, some we may not, you know, don't mind sharing. But somebody mm-hmm. right now listen to the show that you guys are inspiring. You inspire them not only to have a show with a group of men that actually having a good conversation and talking. And even number two, you know, there are people that say that, you know, men don't read. You know, mm-hmm. y'all brothers bought a, a fiction book and read it compared to statistics that women do all of this. So you're kind of showing that, hey, men do all this as well and black men. Yeah. Yeah, I want to talk. I, oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, I want to talk about the, the end of the book because I need more. Oh, like when I ended the book, I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. So, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I I, did, I wanted to get that out. I, I'm sorry. And I'm if I spoil it for someone else, I don't care because I need. <laughs> No, no, you can't do that. No, but listen, right. I don't want to. I don't want to break that question. <laughs> you know, you know what? But in, in Ed's defense, you are not the first person who told me that. You, <laughs> you, you are true. You are truly not the first person. I actually had somebody to call me. Uh, well, he texted me first, but called me at eight in the morning. I'm trying to get ready to go to work, and they were like, "I need more of this book. Why you left me like this?" It's like, hey. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of like what happens next type of mm. <laughs> that we have. Like, okay, mm. I want to know more about these characters. Like, mm. what, ha- like what, what happens? You know what I'm saying? So, especially yeah. with the twist at the end, we have to know what happens next. <laughs> hey, well, yeah, a, a lot of, yeah, who knows what might pop up? So, yeah, that, that's, 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 hey, that's the goal. I mean, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I give you a little taste and all of a sudden you want more and I got you. Like fishing, so hey, so we could possibly expect a part two. You can expect a good book come out <laughs> soon, and can't and can't can't wait to to share it and let everybody know. And hopefully, I can come back on the show and we can talk about it some more. Absolutely. I know. I was. Just, I'm sorry that I took someone else's question, but I was just like, okay. 
I know he no, didn't. No, no. Like, I, I know what you're about to go. <laughs> I was like, if he about to give the end of the... I was, I was kind of scared. I was like, oh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I don't that care. Like, you don't care. Like, <laughs> it's like, in WandaVision, this happened. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I guess I, I got one. Well, I don't know if it's, we got how much time we have, but also um, one of the common things that we, well, one of the things we have in common that we're all um, part of Five Beta Sigma Fraternity um, Incorporated. We're all brothers here. Um, one of, and I know we touched on it earlier, but one of the things that you did cover in the book, in a sense, was the brotherhood that Ellis experienced with some of the people in the in the book. Can you touch on like the importance of adding that part in your book, and then how brotherhood overall has affected you in your life? Okay, well, brotherhood, brotherhood is extremely important because it's always good to have that strong support system, especially with black men. It means it's, it's good to have that that army with you in mm-hmm. brotherhood. I mean, it's great to have a brotherhood in your fraternity, but then you could have a brotherhood in your church, and you could have a brotherhood just some general friends that you 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 have. And each each one of us go through different experiences in our lives. And so there may be some wisdom that we can have for each each one each one of us or the person that we that we have, as far as like a mentor or a big brother or so forth. So it's that dynamic of a brother is it's crucial in life because mm-hmm. you, you wanna have that I am not gonna say experience, but you was want you wanna have that relationship with with, with, with people, like minded people that you can, you know, have that bond with. And there's nothing like having that relationship. I mean, that network, that relationship. I mean, like I said, you guys with the, with this um, great show, you know, with y'all brotherhood and bonding that created this. I mean, you might be able to do something bigger just because of the relationship that you have and the mentorship and so forth. And even, you know, you know, allowing people like myself to come on your show and just to um, promote and advertise, which definitely I appreciate it. And, Thank you, thank you for um, you know allowing me to post this on my newsletter just to let everybody know about y'all show and stuff. And can't wait to get the official Let's Will Podcast shirt. So I just can't wait. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> I, I have one last question. Um, sure. Because uh, you've lost a parent, right? Yes. Yes. I I, ha- I have as well. How did you cope with losing that parent? Well, my mom had lung cancer, so she died on July 4, 2003, 5 o'clock in the morning at Dr. Hospital at Augusta, Georgia. So I still know that pain. Um, like I said, family scar. So I, I definitely understand that um, the pain. And I was 24 years old at that time. So it was hard. And it was one of those things like, wow, she's gone, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm still, I'm still hurt today. I'm, you know, time healed all wounds. But, you know, I'm still still deal with it. There was a time that I hate to go to church on Mother's Day because I was, I guess I could say, envious or jealous of other people that got their mothers, and I don't. Mm-hmm. But right now, kind of like we said earlier, to kind of people go through things, you may be able to talk to them or, you know, be that listening ear, which I've done because I'm kind of sensitive, you know, to, you know, mothers and so forth and Thankfully, my father's still around, and him and my mom was married for 38 years, and she died a week after the anniversary. So, you know, try to check myself, and then, you know, check my father, because, again, you know, being with somebody that long, she's gone, you know, just like, ooh, you know, make sure he's good. But just, you know, each day, you know, keep a, you know, keep a memory. Um, of course, I wish she was here to be my wife and other people, but things happen for a reason. I don't know, and maybe I'm not meant to know, but just, you know, moving forward, you know, keep it positive. I did dedicate the book to her and my granny, um, my grandmother, so she was very close to me growing up as well. So just, just you know, being that outlet, you know, I'm sens- still sensitive far with mothers and so forth, but, you know, still being positive because I know – like my granny, they always tell me that if they go and they pass away, don't be all gloomy and stuff. You know, of course, mourn, but move forward because life is too short and you should not be spending all your days mourning for somebody. That's in the past. You need to move forward, forward throughout the day. So that's how I normally cope. No, nah, and that, and because you never forget today, mine was June 29th. So my mom passed five days after my birthday. 
So you never kind of forget today. And you you was real like Mother's Day and stuff. You kind of get like I used to do like on ESPN when the soldiers would come home and meet their family. I don't know what it was about that moment because that wasn't particularly about mothers, but that was the moment where it was like I would break down. I used to break down all the time, but also with my son now, I think about her a lot. That she, oh yeah, yeah, she, definitely, definitely. I think for me, and I think I'm I'm a firm believer of signs, and I think that. My my at the time my girlfriend at the time, which I'm thinking like, okay, she may be the one because for years before I met her, I never go like anything with Mother's Day, but for some reason she wanted me to go to church with her that day. Then her mother wanted me to go with her because they I guess they didn't want me to be around the house by myself, and so I hung with them. Look, I hadn't bought a Mother's Day gift in years, so I bought you know an elbow arrangement for her mom, but she you know I still got a picture of that and. And it just felt odd, but it felt good at the same time. It's like, wow, I'm I'm somewhere at Mother's Day, and you know, and and then talk to a father. Talk to a father. He lost his mother on a holiday as well, well too. So we got something in common. So just you know, certain times and stuff. And you know, I'm not saying it don't get me, but I'm a whole lot better than I used to be. Awesome, awesome. Any more questions, fellas? I'm looking for part two. That's all. I- do any more questions? He about to spoil. I did not say anything about the. Internet. I know we're talking to about. I, like, well, I need another book. That's I all. I didn't know where you were headed with it. No, um, that's where I was headed. I need another book. I wasn't gonna. I was. I was telling them that the ending. That's kind of spoiling the book. Telling someone that the ending's like a cliffhanger. That's. Yeah. Well, no, he, he but did, I wasn't gonna tell what it was. He good. And then the next book I'm 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 trying to put out. I'm looking to do a higher education book far as my nonfiction, but far as fiction, the next book is called Protect Her Heart. So okay. I'm trying to get ro- ro- romantic. So I'm trying to All right. have a story. <laughs> well, we'll, so. def- we'll definitely be on the look. One thing I want, if you do make a book too, I would love to, like Tasha, like her, fl- I just want to know what happened, like mm. with, with her story. When you, when you guys read the book, Tasha was the one I was following. And- yeah. I mean, uh, I, I thought, think with all the characters, they could all like probably Evelyn. be like I don't know alone. I mean, y'all talking at the same time. I'm right. sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm I think sorry. like with all the characters, they could all be like standalone. Like even like Ellis, like it was a cliffhanger there. Like that story ended and you're like, okay, what's going to happen next for him? Right. And also with Evelyn, um, like a, a lot of things changed in, in her life. And then it's like, okay, what's next? Um, I'm glad she finally figured out that he probably wasn't the dude for her because that's something that happens often. But I'm I love the book. Um, I think it's great. Charles like, um, no, don't do it. <laughs> I love the book. I think it's great. Uh make sure you go get it. Family scars, my godfather. People don't know I call him my godfather. We've had that relationship um since I joined Sigma. Um, and he's kind of been like a godfather, so that's what I call him. But that's cool. And then, as, as, as I told you before, Daryl, if if you if anybody was listening, and if you ever have a contest or whatever you want to do, then I'm, I'm I do a giveaway as far as the book autograph side copy. So however you want to do it, let me know. Again, thanks, thank you to everybody who supported. The, my endeavor, support the book, your prayers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and we are going to do a, a, a contest to uh, give away a book. Okay, uh, good, good. So please, please be on, for people listening, please be on the lookout. Uh, we are going to do one. Um, any parting words, uh, Trey, you want to go? I guess. Well, no, just again, again, thanks for Less of a Man podcast for this opportunity. Definitely appreciate it. And check out Family Scars. Appreciate y'all. Oh, don't forget to let them know about, you know, where can they go? Where can they purchase the book? Um, do you have a website? Go oh, ahead and promo yourself. Sure, sure. You know I'm look, you know I'm shy. <laughs> 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 well, besides besides Amazon, you go on Amazon and Family Scars, um, Scars S C A R S, or you can go onto the website www.treyjohnson.com. That's T R A E johnson.com and you can go click on the shop shop and you click on the link you can go ahead and purchase a book okay. and like i said amazon family scars you can get it ebook or paperback 
All right, Trey Johnson. That's everyone. <laughs> uh, author. <laughs> author Trey Johnson. <laughs> so sorry, you want to uh, send us out? Yes. Um, you can also, I guess that we'll do our promos now. You can find our podcast at all major platforms at Less of a Man. We are at Instagram at Less of a Man. We're at our website is www.lessofamanpodcast.com. Uh, did I miss anything? Brothers? Good. Oh, that's it. your job. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> right. We got everything. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. We got to do this better, Shar. You're making us look <laughs> bad in front of the company. There's something to think about, you know, it's something to think about. I'm rattling your brain right now, cause I don't want you losing out. Expecting everything to be all.